we're gonna give you some guidelines on how to choose a man. Cause a lot of these men around here. Well, choose a that, man, choose me. Well, a man choose a wife, choose a good thing. That's actually true, that but there's still steps that, that the women should take to make sure that she chooses. Yeah, I know that part right too. Mate. Yeah, I've been right, there, done that. Hey brother, what you doing with the sister? Is this your wife? Yeah. No. Th this your girlfriend. Give me uh Wait. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse verse 4. No. Hello. Because there is to be no touching outside of marriage. That, part. that, that is part. that is the reason why our communities have so many single parent households. Hello. You understand? That is why our, our brothers and our sisters grow up without fathers in their house or they grow up to be in jail because they don't have both parents in the household. Right. Because one person wants to dabble in this and that, they want to feel, they want to touch, Where then they have that? sex, and then I they don't what? They don't want to marry. Read. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Huh? Marriage is honorable. God says marriage is honorable. That's Why? Right. Because when you marry, you have an honorable family. You grow up in a solid household. You have both parents and both of the children grow up in their right mind as long as we're teaching God's laws. Read. And all. Huh? And the bed undefiled. And the bed undefiled. Meaning whatever you want to do in the bed with your spouse, that's fine as long as it's according, according to the laws God's of God. Right. Read. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Says, but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. That's you brothers that want to touch up on our sisters and defile our sisters without marrying Read. What does he say about those men? Read. It says God, read that last part. And adulterers, God will judge. It says God will judge you. How do you, how does God judge you? It may be something direct. You might get hit with a bus or it might be something indirect. You might have that unexpected child. You might have that unexpected disease. I see you still close, all close up on the sister. Leave the sister alone. If that's not your wife, give me Exodus chapter 22 and verse 16. Because if that's your girlfriend, right, that's something that God requires. Hey, if you've been touching the, this sister, this is what you must do. Read. Exodus chapter 22, verse 16. Oh, no. And if a man entice a maid. So he spit game, right? That part? To sister, read. That is not betrothed. That is not betrothed, meaning either promise to be married or married. Read. That part? And lie with her. And lie with her. Sleep with her. Read. Lie with me. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. You shall endow her to be his wife. So if you touching on a sister and you sleeping with the sister, me to marry what you me. should do is you should marry the sister. You should not be touching and defiling our sisters, brother. Oh, wow. Go back to Hebrews. Oh, you gonna leave me like that? Yeah, bye. Hey, sister, give me Sirach chapter six and verse seven. Sirach chapter six and verse seven. We're gonna give you some guidelines on how to choose a man. Cause a lot of these men around well, here. Choose a that, man, choose me. Well, that's, man, choose a wife, choose a good thing. That's actually true, that but there's still steps that, that the women should take to make sure that she chooses. Yeah, I know that part right too. Mate. Yeah, I've, I've right, been read. there, done that. Sirach chapter me, six me verse 23. seven. So there's a lot of fornication that goes on in our communities. There's a lot of uh 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 what you call it outside of marriage. Premarital sex that goes on. God has guidelines concerning how to find the right spouse. Read. Sirach chapter 6, verse 7. Huh? If thou wouldest get a friend. So if you want to get a friend, if you want to find a, 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 a man or a woman to spend the rest of your life with, read. Prove him first. God says you must prove them first. How do you prove them? You prove them according to the Bible. Do the actions line up with the words of God. How you doing, brother? We're teaching our people what God requires of them as Israelites. Did you know that you are a Jew according to the Bible? You did. How do you know that you're a Jew according to the Bible? Deuteronomy chapter 6, 28 verse 68. How do you know? You didn't know? Well, we're about to prove it to you. Give me about 30 seconds. I'm going to prove it to you. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 68. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee. So God is talking to the Israelites. He said he's going to bring the Israelites, read, into Egypt into again. Egypt. Exodus 22, real quick. Exodus 22. Egypt is synonymous for something else, right? He said he'd bring the Israelites into Egypt again, read. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. Huh? I am the Lord thy God, huh? which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of the land of Egypt, which is synonymous for, read, 
Out of, out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of bondage. Egypt is synonymous for bondage or slavery. God told the Israelites, if you don't listen to my commandments, you will go into slavery again. When you think about a people that have gone into slavery, who do you think of? What nation of people? <laughs> So-called blacks, right? So guess what? God was talking to the Israelites. Who does that make us? The Israelites, we went through that. Read right. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Uh, yeah. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. Slavery uh, again, right? Read with ships. We went into slavery on ships. They having this us, the so-called blacks, Hispanic, and Native Americans. These are curses used to identify who the Israelites are. All right, make sure you read that flag. Give me a flag. Give me a flag. You got a flag? Oh, okay. yeah. All right. How we know that we're Israel. How we know we were Israel. Jump back. Read it again. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 46. Come here, sis. Sis, so, so we're going over our nationality that we are the real Jews according to the Bible, right? Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 46. So God, God told the Israelites, the Jews, if you don't obey my commandments, curses will come upon you. Now we're going to read the significance or the purpose of these curses. Read. And they shall be upon thee. The curses shall be upon the Israelites. Read. For a sign. For a sign. Meaning, when you go on Sumter Street, there's a sign that says Sumter Street. That, that's how you know that you're on Sumter Street. Likewise, when you see these curses on a certain nation of people, that's how you identify them as that as the Israelites. Not by DNA tests, not by what the white man says, but by these curses in the Bible, right? Jump to verse uh, 40, 68. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee. So God is telling the Israelites he's going to bring them into where? Into Egypt. Into Egypt. Exodus 22. Now the Bible is going to define what Egypt is synonymous for. There's no need to go to other books to find out what most of the things in the Bible mean. Or really what anything in the Bible means. They have its own dictionary inside of it. Right? Read that. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. Uh -huh. no. No. I am the Lord thy God. Which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of the land of Egypt. Now it's going to replace Egypt with another word. Read. Out of the house of bondage. So Egypt is synonymous for bondage or slavery. Now jumping back to verse 28 and 68, we're going to tie two and two together. Read. And the Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. Into Egypt or slavery. Read. Again, with ships. So what nation of people went into slavery with ships? That's the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, right? That's us. That only applied to us. Therefore, that is what makes us the Israelites because we identify with the curses in the Bible. Right. And it wasn't just curses. I know you're looking at me kind of crazy. It wasn't just curses. At first, it was blessings if we obeyed God's commandments. But because we did not, curses came upon us. And now we identify ourselves as the Israelites today because we line up as a race of people with the curses in the Bible. Read on by the way whereof I spake unto Meaning thee. Exactly how he said it's gonna happen is how it will happen. Read. Thou shalt see it no more again. Our homeland, we would not see it again. Give me Galatians chapter 4 and verse 26. Our home as a nation of people, what, what would you say our homeland is? Everybody always saying Africa. Africa. And that's actually true. But there's a specific part of Africa that is the motherland, right? Read that. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 26. There's a specific part that is our motherland. A lot of people say Africa, but that's that's very vague. That's like saying what's the capital? That's like saying what's the capital or what's uh what's the biggest spot in uh in South Carolina if someone goes Columbia. Well there's certain places in Columbia, you see what I'm saying? But read that. Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. Uh -huh. But Jerusalem, Jerusalem, read, which is above is free. Uh -huh. Which is the mother of us all. So Jerusalem is that motherland that God said we would not go back to. All right? So read. Thou shalt see it no more again. So our homeland as a nation of people, have we went back to Jerusalem? No, we have not. We identify with the curses of the Bible. Nobody else. Read. And there. And there, meaning once we got off those slave ships, what happened to us? Did we just go and do whatever we want when we sold? We were sold. We were sold. Let's find out. If the, let's see if the Bible says that. Bro. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. So the Bible says after that we will be sold to our enemies. That only happened to us. So we got we came on slave ships, never went back to our homeland, were sold to our enemies. We line up with the curses of the Bible. That's how we identify who the Israelites are today. Nobody else can say this that that's them. Right? You, can you agree with that? Therefore, that's how we know that we are the Israelites. We don't. For bond men and bond women. It says for bond men, slave men, and slave women. Read. And no man shall buy you. And no man shall buy you. It's just a, buy you is just a Quaker term for redeeming because it just said we'd be sold into our enemies. 
right? So that means no man will be able to redeem us out of uh, the situation that we're in. That's why we should not be voting. We should not be voting for no one because what's going to get us out of this captivity is keeping the laws of God. What brought us in this captivity is disobeying the laws of God. Give me verse 15. So remember, keep that in mind though. These curses identify us. That only happened to us, right? So do you have a little bit better understanding on how we know that we're the Israelites now? Mm -hmm. You do. Uh, read that though, read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Uh -huh. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So God said, if you don't listen to my voice to do what, read? To observe, to do all his commandments. To do all his commandments. Meaning what? We can't pick and choose what we want to do. We can't say, I don't want to murder, I don't want to steal. But then when God says, put fringes on our garment, we don't want to do that. When God says, don't shave off your beard, we don't want to do that. When God says, don't smoke weed, we don't want to do that. We can't pick and choose, read. And his statutes. Uh -huh, and his sub-laws. That's that, that's the smaller things, read. Which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So we went into slavery for breaking God's laws. Curses came upon us because we broke God's laws. So how do we get back out? We keep God's laws. Give me 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 47. 1 Kings chapter 8 verse 47. How do we get out of the conditions that we are in? How do we uplift ourselves from the lowest state, both mentally and physically, that we're in? God is going to help us through that, right? Read. 1 Kings chapter 8 verse 47. Because when we apply these laws, we see both spiritual and physical differences happening in our lives. Right? Read. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves. And we shall bethink ourselves. It's talking to the Israelites. It says, we shall bethink ourselves. Meaning what? In the land of our captivities, a lot of times we don't even wonder who we are. They call us niggas. We're like, okay. I think our nationality has been changed, what, like seven times since the 19, uh, what, like 80s or something like that? We don't even think why they're changing our nationality so many times. We've been called Negroes, African Americans, Afro Americans, colored blacks, so on and so forth. But read on. Yet, yeah, if they shall bethink themselves. Uh -huh, remember who they are. Remember that we are the Israelites, that we are the real Jews according to the Bible. That's we are God's chosen people, and nobody else can say that. Read what? In the land where they were carried captives. This is a land where we were carried captives. In other lands as well, we were scattered throughout the whole world. Read. And repent. And repent. Meaning what? What does repent mean? It means to come back to doing something. What? That's God's laws. That's, That's what right. we read in verse 15 of Deuteronomy 28. We must keep God's laws. If we didn't, curses would come upon us. Read. And make supplication unto thee in the land of them. And make supplication unto thee. Meaning what? We, we, we make prayer and we confess our faults and then we repent from it. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission, minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof, I-U-I-C, we deliver the truth.